in the last class we started discussing extensively about total correlation spectroscopy called TOXI. Again it gives you correlation information among the coupled partners of a given spin system. This is an extended version of the COSI where there is a relay transfer of the magnetization from one spin to another spin to another spin like that from the group of coupled spins so long as they form a there is a coupling among them and forms a coupled spin system. I also told you how it works. It works because in during the spin lock pulse which you are going to apply then what is going to happen is the chemical shift differences become 0 and then there exists a J coupling because the spin lock pulse can be treated as if it is like a spin a infinite number of spin of sequences which are closely spaced. As a consequence chemi chemical shift evolution is not there whereas J couplings do evolve. So, it creates a strong coupling spin system in which case spins can exchange energy among its coupled partners and there is a cyclic exchange of energy it will go from one to other one depending upon the mixing time, time you are going to give and also depending upon the coupling strength I said. It keeps going among all the coupled partners and then if the if you extend for a long time it may even come back it there is always going on cyclic exchange it does not go unidirectionally it gives you next spin come back at the same time it will be coming back from the next spin go to the third spin again it is coming back. So, the cyclic phenomenon is going on. So, we understood how a taxi works it is much better than a cosy in one experiment all the part coupled partners can be identified whether it come vertically or go horizontally from the diagonal peak all the cross peaks identifies the coupled partners. So, that is what we understood and we took one or two examples and compared that with the Cauchy spectrum how it is advantageous and where in the Cauchy we have to go in a stepwise manner. That is what we discussed. We will go further today with one or two more examples and discuss more about toxic advantage of toxic. Okay. So, this is a another example of a 500 megahertz one S NMR spectrum of isomoyl value rate in chloroform and this is the spectrum. Of course, analysis of the spectrum is not uh, difficult at all. If you carefully see which are the peaks, how do you analyze everything? We know it. I mean, we, but let us not get into the 1D analysis of this. We will straight away see how we can analyze this in an easy way <coughs> by using Toxi. We can assign the peaks in one shot. And of course, looking at the molecule, you can identify there are only two groups of coupled spins here. This CH3, CH2, 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 1, 2, 3, 4 form one coupled spin system and 6 to 9 forms another coupled spin system. If you do a cosy, there is a breakage because you can go from 1 to 2, 3 to 3 to 4 like that. And again you have to identify another peak from the diagonal start with 6, 7, 8 and you go systematically. But a simple toxic spectrum of this molecule is like this. You start with one of the peak, any peak horizontal or vertical I told you. You can see from this diagonal you I come horizontally you get 4 peaks and I will say this peak, this peak and this peak if you go vertically this one, this one and this one they are all coupled partners that forms a, forms a spin system and you can get this, this is H1, 2, 3, 4 I started with one of them this I this was H4 identified because it is attached to C double bond O. So, there is a confidence in the assignment using that as peak on the diagonal we went horizontally and identified all the peaks. Of course, you can go vertically also as I told you you can identify all the same 4 peaks. Okay. So, if you go vertically you can go back here and identify the couple partners very easily. So, this is one spin system. Go further you can see there are, there are 4 peaks here start with this diagonal come here 1, 2, 3, 4. So, you can identify all these 4 couple partners. Uh, see it started with uh, this proton which is 6 which is attached to oxygen and then it comes to here, here and here everything can be easily identified of course. So, so, one of them of course has a very weak intensity as I told you it depends upon the coupling strength and the mixing time ok. The another spin system is identified. So, it is easily toxic identified to spin systems. Now, we will start with the analysis of the 2D toxic spectrum of beta to glucose in CDCL3. This is a molecule, it is a disaccharide. Okay. Let us see how we analyze this di di disaccharide. It has a glycosidic linkage also. But there are 8 acetyl esters here, each of them consisting of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4, 6, etcetera in the beta lactose. You can see which are those acetyl esters 
like these four and these four. These are the eight acetyl esters which are present. And each saccharide has seven chemically inequivalent protons here, here. I have marked six, uh, six, but remember H6 has six and six prime both. All others have single protons, but other one six has two protons. So, there are seven chemically inequivalent protons here in each of the ring, each of the saccharide group. Okay. So, we have two couple spins. Definitely, we should identify because uh, we analyze the glucose spectrum of the COSI and earlier a few examples. We always start with an anomeric proton and then we could identify all the couple partners. Here also, we should do that. But we can also, uh, instead of doing through COSI, we can also do through the taxi. This is one couple spin system, this is another couple spin system. We will do the taxi. Okay. Now, taxi should exhibit correlation among all the couple protons. Of course, depending upon the mixing time, because it is a big system. For from one proton to all the six protons, if it has to go, we have to have mixing time quite large. Because remember, mixing time will be of the order of milliseconds here 30 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds, up to sometimes 80 milliseconds we can go, 100 milliseconds like that. Lord, mixing time becomes larger. But you cannot give enormously. If you give more than two, the whatever is required, more 200, 300 like that, whatever the gain you lost, you have gained, will be losing. Because the background is again come back to the starting spin. This is what happened. This is the to toxic spectrum of this beta D glucose with a mixing time of 70 millisecond. Mixing time is of the order of several milliseconds, I told you. Now, can you identify two couple spin systems? Very easily we can identify. Start with any one of the row, that horizontal row. This correspond to Siemens system A. We can identify seven chemical inequivalent groups I told you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, this and there is a overlap here and there is a overlap here this one and this one and this one. See in a coupled spin system there is a severe overlap just going horizontally one row you will identify all the coupled spin. Of course, everything remains identical you can go to any row because it is symmetric everything you can go horizontally vertically column wise or row wise we can identify all the spin system. Go to the other one, it identify another spin system. But you may see all the seven peaks may not be seen there in the other one. You see, there is a there are some issues. That is because beyond a certain level, magnetization transfer may be not become efficient because the coupling between one of them become very weak. So and there is a stop there, there is a it reaches a dead end. But then do not stop at that, you can look for other rows. You can combine one or two rows if there is enough transfer of magnetization is not there among all the couple uh, spin because of weak coupling or so in between, but you can use two or three rows and then get the required information like this you can do this is one column other column if that way identified all the see here in this row only four are identified that for the remaining three you can go like this it is possible right. So, we can go like that and identify everything and some of the toxic transfer peaks are barely visible a simple doublet you start with at this thing that correspond to anomeric proton and of course, with that we can draw the line and analyze, analyze everything. Only second spin system has a bottleneck I told you we, have, we are seeing only 4 because it does not go through the entire spin system. It is because bottleneck is at the proton C4 in the galaxy there is less coupling there is equatorial axial coupling which is smaller. As a consequence beyond that taxi does not transfer the magnetization to spin system very weak coupling as a consequence it may not have, but you can find out from the other one also other print there are several rows in some rows you can use we can identify all the spin system and then identify assign all the peaks. Of course, you do the same thing in the COSI you look at the advantage of TOXI and COSI COSI if you start like this and goes you identify one spin system start with this one okay, and I will go like this. 1 it will come to 2 I can identify 2, 2 to 3 identify 3, 3 to 4 and then 4 to 5 there 4 and 5 identify, identified and 5 to 6 here 6 and 6 prime 6 a both are there 6 a and b whole whole spin system you can identify here there is no bottleneck even for the other one also other spin, spin, spin system also you can keep going like this all 6 you can identify the advantage here you can do it in a better way, but only step by step. In the taxi, there are some issues where there is no complete transfer of magnetization, but of course, you can combine both of them and analyze this one. Okay. Where do you use this taxi? Very efficiently, if you want to use the taxi, think of a situation. 
let us say you are working on a biomolecule like a peptide or a protein. What do these contain? What is the primary structure? They are com consisting of amino acids of the primary structure, several sequence of amino acids and each amino acid forms a spin system. For example, take glycine here starting from NH3, CH, COH, CH this forms one spin system. Go to alanine starting from CH3, CH, NH3 form one spin system and go for, go for the leucine CA3, CA, CH2, CH, and NH3. All of them form a coupled spin system. So, in each amino acid forms a coupled spin system. So, there is a toxic transfer of magnetization among all the protons right from CA3 to NH group. So, what you will do? If there is a protein or a peptide you are as analyzing, sequence of amino acids are there, simply draw a number of vertical lines, each of them will identify what how many amino acids are there and of course, further you can interpret the spectrum very easily. So, each amino acid forms a spin system and they are identifiable by one vertical row or horizontal row that is what it is vertical line or horizontal line you draw and identify everything. This is the glycine you see start with CH, C alpha come here and then NH. Similarly, for C alanine CA3 to C alpha and then the NH this is cosy but toxic identified in one row. Same way here in the case of leucine start with CA3 then it comes here to, and then here you have to come like this for cosy step by step manner. Instead of that what we do here is in one shot CA3 to NH proton all of them assigned in one shot. Otherwise we go here NH to here 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 like that several steps you have to do in cosy. But to ask you see from CA3 to NH all the coupled par peak partners give rise to cross peaks any row you take does not matter. Similarly, an uh, example of toxic of cysteine, glutamate and some cases you can, you can have 2 or 3 spin systems present. For example, in this molecule if you consider tryptophan, this forms one spin system, this forms another spin system. So, there will be 2 sets of peak like we saw in the previous example. So, you can have 2 different spin systems to identify, you can identify everything. So, you can see the advantage of the toxi. It is in biomolecule especially when you want to analyze bigger molecules like peptides or protein tox is very very useful to make the assignment. Cosy is going to be very cumbersome there you can use toxic ok like this. Oh yes look at this leucine starting from NA3 completely everything has been taken and methionine starting from CA3 here up to NH all the peaks can be identified ok. Now, I will tell you one advantage of toxic over cosy. What is an advantage? That is very interesting. Let us understand that. <coughs> Where do you find it? Of course, already I showed the advantage. If you want to analyze a biomolecule like proteins or nucleic acids, nucleotides, there are if there are several uh, you know if a big saccharide if you consider or a big protein, uh, there is a limit of course to get the size of the protein. Then doing a toxic helps you in identifying each amino acid by a single row or a single column fine. Apart from that there are certain advantages one of the advantage I am going to tell you now consider a situation we have one spin system like this there are 5 protons coupled one this is one coupling 1 2 1 2 3 3 4 and 4 5 there are 5 different couplings for one spin system. Go to another spin system same 5 protons. This I am going to call it as A B C D E. We have J A B, J B C, J C D, J D E. Two different spin systems and it is mixed. You are going to run a toxic. It so happens when you look at the spectrum, this chemical shift of 3 and chemical shift of C are overlapped, indistinguishable. There is both of them come at the same chemical shift. What you do now? Is there a problem in this analysis? Of course, there is a problem in the analysis if you are not careful. Look at this one spin system I can come here and then go we will look at the Cauchy spectrum of this where you get into problems and this is the one spin system 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 other is other one. Now, how do you make the assignment? start on the diagonal of one of them 1 to 2 you go then 2 to 3 
you go to 3 to 4, 4 to 5 perfect you can analyze. Other one start with E to B, D, D to C, C B, A both these spin systems are clearly analyzed identified there is no problem at all if, if my assignment is correct in spite of the fact both are overlapped both 3 and C are overlapped there same chemical shift here accidentally it was right but I can also make a mistake like this look at this I can start with 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 I will go here there is a overlap of 3 and C from two different spins same uh, chemical shape both the peaks are coming now where do you go this this is also possible instead of going here to complete this is the, if we complete the uh, uh, analysis like this you are right accidentally I showed you it is possible in the previous slide but uh, there is also possibility you can go like this you are crossed over from one spin system to another spin system two different molecules you can make a mistake also or you can also do like this it is quite likely you can start with this now instead of going to red I can go through blue what happened here again I crossed over when there is a overlap when I am analyzing the Cauchy spectrum there is every possibility that I can make a mistake if there is overlap if they, are, if they are completely overlapped and it is difficult for you to distinguish we can make a mistake like this we can cross over to the different spin system while analyzing alternately what we can do is I will run a taxi what does the taxi give taxi gives cross peaks among all the for example you take the blue spin start from here go like this all the peaks you can identify come like this all the peaks you can identify similarly for the C this one you can identify all the 5 peaks even though this is a overlap here you can distinguish them which is not possible in the Cosi you there is possibility one can make a mistake and cross over to a different spin system you under, you see the advantage of it so Toxi has a better advantage at times when there is a severe overlap of the peaks simply Toxi you can draw and then identify all the spin systems like this. So, this is what I just wanted to tell you about Toxi. I showed you what is the Toxi, where do we use, and advantage of Toxi over Cosi, etc. Uh, these are all both are both are homonuclear correlation experiments. With this, we will now switch over to a different topic that is heteronuclear correlation experiment. I will start it right now. Okay. We will start with the heteronuclear correlation experiment. Okay. So far we discussed about homonuclear. Now we will switch out to entirely a different experiment where we are not correlating the same spins, we are correlating unlike spins, different spins, not like spins. We will start with this one. What it does? Earlier case it was correlation from proton to proton, whether it is cosy or taxi, does not matter. But here correlation is from proton to carbon or nitrogen or any other nuclei apart from the same spin. See, it will always have different heteronuclear correlation. What is the requirement for this? Again, there must be a J coupling. Using J coupling only, we can do the correlation. Simi for all these correlation experiments, whether it is homonuclear, heteronuclear, J coupling is essential. In the homonuclear case, quotient toxic, coupling among protons, among homonuclear nuclear spins are needed. But here, coupling among heteronuclear spins are needed that is what it is and you can do the chemical shift connectivity between carbon 13 proton, nitrogen 15 proton, fluorine proton etcetera. Any heteronuclear can be correlated. J usually one of them is the abundant spin other than the rare spin. You may ask me what about the correlation among dilute spins that is a different thing I will come to that later ok. So, heteronuclear correlation experiment if I do few important points you must remember they are not symmetrical unlike cosy and toxic why 
because in both the dimensions the chemical shift range is identical. If I am doing protons, so homonuclear course you have protons, it is 10 ppm chemical shift range along F1 and 10 and the in the F2 identical, it forms a symmetrical thing and there will be a diagonal. So, with respect to diagonal, they are all symmetric, no doubt about it, that is true. But here they are not symmetrical because heteronuclear chemical shift ranges are different. Proton may go from 0 to 10 ppm, carbon 13 may go to 0 to 300 ppm it is not square at all. So, question of symmetry does not come at all, chemical shift ranges are entirely different. So, heteronuclear spectrum first thing is not symmetrical and there are no diagonal peaks here okay? because in the homonuclear case in Cauchy both the dimensions are determined in the same spin. For example, the proton is, you know is having a frequency, some frequency in T1 period you are detecting the same thing uh, supposing if it remains un unchanged same frequency is retained in the T2 dimension also you are going to get a diagonal peak because we are detecting both proton in both the dimensions. But in the second dimension here I am not detecting proton. So, the question of diagonal does not come at all there are no diagonal peaks in, it, in the heteronuclear correlation. And nor nor normally what we do is the indirect dimension is less abundant spin. What do you mean by that? In the ca case of a 2D, this is direct dimension F2, this is F1 indirect dimension. Indirect dimension we always take less abundant spin like carbon 13, nitrogen 15 etcetera. Abundant spin is here proton, fluorine etcetera. That is a conversion. Indirect is, of course, you can do the reverse also. There is also possible nowadays so many experiments are possible. We can even do indirect dimension abundant spin and direct dimension less abundant spin both are possible inverse experiments is possible. But this was the convention for Hetkar the indirect dimension less abundant direct dimension abundant spin. Okay, what is the simplest Hetkar pulse sequence? It is like this heteronuclear pulse sequence is very simple on the carbon 13 channel you have a detective pulse 90 pulse. In the proton channel you apply 90 degree pulse and allow it to evolve for a time T1 that is a T1 period evolution period. Then after that you give some delay that where you apply inept mixing to do, to do the polarization transfer and then 290 degree pulses there. What it 290 degree pulses will do? I already explained to you. It will ensure that the antiphase magnetization gets transferred from one spin to other, other spin from proton to carbon it can be transferred. So, this is how very simple pulse sequence. 290 degree pulses on the proton channel T1 period evolution, but after the evolution there is inept mixing for polarization transfer. How this pulse sequence works without going into the detail I will explain to you. What does my first 90 degree pulse do? It will bring the magnetization to x y plane that is what it does. And here magnetization starts evolving because I have applied 90 degree pulse then what does evolve? Carbon 13 chemical shift will not come here because I am applying pulse only in proton. So, proton chemical shifts and proton chemical shifts start evolving here all right and after some time what I am going to do is after the T1 period I am going to do the inept here. What it what does inept does? It converts proton magnetization into antiphase with respect to carbon 13 for polarization transfer. We have understood what is inept, we discuss extensively for 2 or 3 classes. So, inept creates antiphase magnetization of the proton with respect to carbon 13. Now, simultaneous application of 290 degree pulses uh, what will it will do? It will transfer the proton magnetization to carbon 13. So, that means antiphase magnetization gets jumping it jumps from proton to carbon and then start detecting the carbon 13 signal. That is what basically you do carbon 13 signal is detected bring the magnetization to x y plane allow it to evolve do an inept for magnetization transfer create antiphase magnetization of proton apply two simultaneous 90 degree pulses transfer to carbon 13 and start detecting the signal. This is the basic simple experiment. So, in Hetkar if you want to understand in brief gives information 
about which carbon is attached to which proton. It is done by inverting the proton population and varying the transfer of proton magnetization during T1. T1 in, when I vary this one, I will first bring down the magnetization and then of the proton uh, that population and keep on varying the T1 period. Okay, that is how the two dimensional weight is going to be done and vary the transfer of polarization to carbon to 13 as a function of T1 and this depends upon JCH views. You can have Hetkar experiment both decoupled version and coupled version. What is mean by decoupled version? I can see the carbon 13 with proton decoupling in the decoupling channel. I can use the carbon 13 channel I can decouple proton or I can see proton with carbon 13 decoupling that is also possible both are possible. Or I can do not do decouple at all on both the dimensions and I both the dimensions I am going to get the coupled spectrum. So, this is what happens and this is the spectrum of Hetkar spectrum decoupled in both the dimensions. When you decoupled in both the dimensions interpretation of the Hetkar spectrum is fairly simple. You do not need to break your head at all very simple way to analyze. First of all these are the proton peaks here in this dimension proton and this dimension it is carbon 13 ok. In the proton somehow we have assigned this to be CA 3. Proton assignment has been done either by one way or like of course whatever the experiment you have done. This is another CA 3 this and then this CA 3 and then we have a CH 2 CH CH 2 ok all the 3 are there everything has been easily identified this CA CH and CA 3. CA3 CH2. There are two CHS, one CA3 and two CA3 and one CH2. Okay, this is what we it is. When I make the assignment, I know the proton can be considered. If I get a peak in the head car, heteronuclear correlation, sit on that peak, go horizontally. You see, hit the proton in the proton dimension, I get proton chemical shift. Go vertically up, you get carbon 13 chemical shift very easy. So, it correlates proton and carbon uh, carbon in this experiment it is a proton carbon HHQC uh, heterocorrelation correlation I can correlate the chemical sheet of two coupled nuclei one bond directly attached which carbon is attached to which proton I can find out. So, I this is what I told you remember I was telling you when I was uh, discussing in the introduction to 2D simultaneous detection of two nuclei is not possible in 1D that was a limitation. But now it is possible. Look at it, I get a peak. Simultaneously, I can get proton and carbon chemical shifts. If I do the decoupled coupled experiment, I can get uh, heteronuclear coupling and also homonuclear coupling, both depending upon the type of experiment I do. So, in one experiment, both the nuclei can be detected. That was the limitation of 1D. So, we, I showed you the advantage of a 2D, especially in HSQC. I can correlate, like for example, come with this port peak. Now, go horizontally, I will identify this proton CA3 peak. Go vertically, I get the carbon 13 peak. Similarly, for this, this. Very easily, you have to draw horizontal line and vertical line. Horizontally, if you come to proton axis, you get proton chemical shift, and this peak tells me CH chemical shift of proton and also carbon 13 chemical shift of the same CH group. This CH has carbon and proton, its carbon chemical shift is this, and proton chemical shift is this. For this proton, this is the proton chemical shift and this is the carbon chemical shift of the CH3 group, I am sorry CH2 group. So, very easily you can identify do not get confused take the CH2 group in the CH2 group I go vertically I get carbon chemical shift come horizontal I get proton chemical shift. Here it is taken this is chemical carbon 13 axis this is proton axis it can be reversed depending upon the type of experiment you have done you can identify chemical shifts in either dimension. Go particular and horizontally you can get the correlation information heteronuclear correlation. Advantage also I can tell you take an example of molecule epsilon. You can identify what proton 1 C A 3 this is the proton uh, the carbon dimension this is proton chemical shift ok that is the proton chemical shift and vertically if you if you go you get carbon chemical shift. Similarly, for 2 they are overlapped you can find out you see this one for the proton 3 you get carbon chemical shift and proton chemical shift. Look at this one this proton 6 this is an advantage this has 
two different chemically inequivalent protons like we saw in the glucose 6 and 6 prime they have different chemical shapes of proton but same carbon attached to same carbon similarly here these are two chemically inequivalent protons attached to same carbon now if i go vertically up here i get the carbon chemical shifts and then go horizontally i get two different chemical shifts one chemical shift of the one proton here other chemical shift here for other proton so this is an advantage so in the uh, one uh, this thing one cross peak of the carbon correlates to two proton chemical shifts like this so you can find out this thing you look at this one also this prot carbon 10 again has two protons all of them very easily you can identify so all you have to do head car interpretation is very simple go horizontally or vertically get proton chemical shifts and carbon chemical shift if two different uh, chemically equivalent protons are attached to the same carbon you will get the same one chemical shift in the carbon 13 dimension for the same carbon but you have two different proton chemical shifts so this is an advantage so very easily you can do the experiment and do the interpretation like this okay so now since the time is getting up what i am going to do is i we have to extend this for the inverse spectroscopy hsqc can be done in a the, the heteronuclear correlation can be done in a different way i am going to discuss that one in the next class but what we discussed today we discussed more about the toxic a few more examples i showed you what is the advantage of toxic over cosi toxic easily identify all the coupled spins in a spin system in one single experiment either you go vertically draw a vertical line or a horizontal line from the diagonal all the cross peaks identifies coupled partners similarly if you go horizontally also it identify all its couple partners and i showed the advantage when there is a overlap how cosi can be confusing and it can mislead the interpretation whereas toxic can easily overcome circumvent that problem then you switch out heteronuclear correlation i showed you how heteronuclear correlation works it is simple correlation of one spin one proton let's proton to carbon nitrogen etc to any other heteronuclei so this is possible and this pulse sequence is also heteronuclear correlation is very simple in the case of proton you allow it to evolve and do the inner polarity polarization transfer create a antiphase co coherence for proton then simultaneously apply 290 degree pulses on proton and carbon then the coherence jumps from proton to carbon and the tet carbon it is a very simple experiment that is what we discussed and then I showed the example of how we can interpret the carbon 13 heterogate car experiment first of all head car is not symmetrical and there are no diagonal peaks and and usually in one dimension you will have inter indirect dimension will have a less abundant spin direct dimension is the abundant spin the other way is also possible and we took the example of one or two molecules and very easily we knew how to interpret the spectrum so with this i'll stop here and we'll continue with the inverse experiments in the next class thank you